Hello, uh, now it's a beautiful day in Hawke's Bay today, so what better day to make a Fijoa cake. Uh, this cake is gluten free and it's a healthier version of the sometimes quite indulgent Fijoa cakes. Now, if you're wondering what is a Fijoa, well let me tell you because Fijoas are quite scarce um, out of Australia and New Zealand. Um, a native fruit to South America, these are them here, very high in vitamin C. Uh, however, if you are not somewhere where you can find Fijoas easily, you can make this cake also with any canned fruit um, or stewed fruit if you um, do stew your own. Um, we've got some peaches here and some apricots. Uh, if you do use another fruit, just make sure you drain the fruit well uh, before adding the mixture to the cake. I'm obsessed with Fijoas, so very excited to make this cake. Should have also mentioned this cake is super easy to make, so a great one to make uh, with the kids at home or for yourself because it's all made in the blender here. Essentially, you just put the wet ingredients in, the dry ingredients in, whiz it up, pop it in the oven, then you're done. So, uh, to start, preheat your oven to 180 degrees bake, uh, and then for this cake, we'll need a ring tin. Uh, so this is a ring tin. Um, if it's not non-stick, uh, add some baking paper to the bottom like I've done here. Doesn't have to be pretty, as you can see. So, you will need four large eggs at room temperature, a quarter of a cup of cashew butter or almond butter. So I've got almond butter here. The reason for using cashew or almond is they have a more subtle taste um, than peanut butter. Uh, you can use peanut butter, it can just be quite overpowering and take over that Fijoa flavour. You will of course need the star ingredient, which is one cup of Fijoa pulp here. Uh, keep in mind if you have frozen Fijoas and you are defrosting them to put in the cake, again, you'll need to drain the excess water that is accumulated when freezing. Uh, we've got half a cup of melted coconut oil here as your fat. Uh, and additionally, um, for the dry ingredients, we've got two and a half cups of ground almonds here, also known as almond flour. Now, if you don't have ground almonds, you can just use normal almonds um, that haven't been roasted. Whiz them up into the food processor until fine and you'll get your own almond flour, often a little bit cheaper that way too. Um, to add a little bit of sweetness, we've got half a cup of caster sugar here or coconut sugar. Now, if you've just got uh, normal granular white sugar in your pantry, no issues. All you need to do is whiz that up in the food processor and then you'll get a cast of sugar there, which is just uh, white sugar with a finer crumb. We've got uh, half a teaspoon of ground ginger here for a little bit of a punch. Uh, and we've got quarter of a cup of desiccated coconut. And then finally, now this is optional, we've got one teaspoon of baking powder. Now I say that is optional because without that, um, this cake is usually quite dense and more of a dessert cake. But if you want a little bit of more of a rise, um, add the baking powder there. Righto, let's get whizzing. to combine and we want to whisk this well because we're going to create air in the egg whites and that's going to help the cake rise. Here we go. minute or two to create uh, the ear and the egg whites. Now we'll add our dry ingredients. Right, so we're going to whiz this again until we're combined 
and then we're pretty much done. <laughs> stubborn coconut on the side there, as I can see, um, grab a spatula, don't have a spatula on me, um, and just scrape it down the side to ensure you get all that goodness mixed together. And now we're going to pour into our prepared tin. Yes. Divine. Again, spatula, quite necessary there. Uh, and now we are going to bake the cake for about 35 minutes or until the cake bounces back slightly when touched and a cake skewer when inserted should produce a cakey mixture not a wet mixture, but make sure it's cakey, not dry, because we want the cake to be lovely and moist. So let's pop her in. Righto. I've already done the cake tester test whereby the cake produced a cakey, not a wet mixture. And as you can see, it bounces back slightly when touched. So cool the cake for 10 minutes in the tin before removing and transferring to a wire rack to cool completely. What I love to do while the cake is still warm is to squeeze some fresh Fijoa juice over the cake for extra moisture or a bit of honey if you're that way inclined. So this is my video cake. Green gold.